Kim, good to see you. Thank you very much for coming to report out. Apologies, we're a few minutes late in starting. Um, we've got um, two important report outs today. We're going to slightly switch around the order. So we're going to start with Value Stream 2, which is, of course, urology, discharge and TURP. And this is Rapid Process Improvement Week number three entitled Edan and Beyond. Very exciting. <laughs> so um, welcome to the team. Perhaps I'll let you introduce them, Penny, yeah. and uh, looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. Hello, my name is um, Penny McSorley. I'm Head of Nursing um, for Abdominal Medicine and Surgery. I, I feel like all I do is report out. I think this is like the third week of running um, that I've been here. Um, today we're going to report out on RPIW3 um, in our value stream. Um, we are at about 120 days with this RPIW now, um, because if I'm really honest, the work that we did in the original RPIW week has led us onto a whole host of things around ward rounds, uh, registrars of the week, EDAMs being completed in theatres, so the initial piece of work that we did has actually snowballed uh, into, into lots of things. Um, you're going to hear from the team today um, who've been doing lots of really good work this week. Catherine Hughes is one of our improvement fellows that's been working with us in neurology and has been helping us trial lots of different things on the ward this week. Um, we've got Betty, um, as one well of the sisters from J42, um, Rebecca Sherritt, who's one of our advanced nurse practitioners, and Eileen Collett, who's a sister on J43. Um, and we're just going to tell you a bit today about um, some of the things that have been going on around improvements. Um, this was our original target progress report around <coughs> EDAMS. Um, we, we measured up to 90 days and we had some positive progress around the amount of time it took to uh, do an EDAM. Some of our quality defects were around, some of our patients were going without EDAMs completed at all, and the medication was going in taxis to patients at home. Um, and some patients were going without an EDAM completed at all, or sent to the GP within 24 hours. We got some good measures at 90 days, um, but if I'm really honest, and I've spoken to people about it, we got a bit stuck at 90 days and a bit... We, we had a look at these measures and thought, do they really fit where we need to go with the improvements we want to make in urology? We had a bit of a stop the line, which is a process where we say, are we looking at the right things? Have we, have we got things right? And it, it became clear, and I think I was as um, guilty as anyone of thinking that if you wrote an EDAM in theatre, that would solve all our problems on the surgical ward of then being able to discharge patients quicker. <coughs> Um, and I think we challenged a lot of assumptions that some of us have made about how we were going to get EDOMs done quickly. So what I'm going to do is hand over to the team, to Catherine first, just to talk to you, talk you through what we've done since stopping the line and, and how we've got, what we've chosen to look at as part of this work. Thank you, Penny. Um, so my name is Catherine Hughes, I'm a pharmacist and I've been a clinical leadership fellow for the last year, it finishes today, um, officially. Um, and, I'm, um, and I'm going to share with you the work that I've been doing. I'm also on the Lead for Leaders programme, and my project has recently expanded from a piece of work that I was doing about antibiotics to the whole of the ward round in urology, so it's quite big. So just to give you a background of what was going on before. So with the previous situation was that we had four registrars on the ward round at any one time in the morning. So it would start at 8 o'clock, there'd be four registrars doing different <coughs> ward rounds. So it was really, really difficult. It was quite chaotic, I think, would be a word I, I, I think it's fair to use. Um, and difficult for nurses to have to be involved and people to be to be included. Um, so really difficult as a multidisciplinary team to work. Um, lots of interruptions and lots of handover of information between staff. So some, some wasted time, really, and quite a lot of frustration for a lot of people. Um, I was involved in some work, doing some human factors work with the urology team as part of this clinical leadership fellow. Um, year and on an education session we did some improvement work with so these are pictures from the, the whole team so we've got consultants registrars we've got theatre staff here and um, we've got nurses we've got advanced nurse practitioners in the room and we did some discussion work about what we need to do to improve the world round um, the themes that emerged from that was something around doing tasks at the time rather than after um, and making sure that the staff were available who were competent to be able to carry out those tasks um, reviewing and actioning stuff around medicines, so prescribing and doing things at the time um, around medicines. Um, how do we improve handover, both electronic and also face-to-face? -face? 
how do we use technology on the world round? So how do we use PPM Plus? How do we use e-medicines? How do we how do we move these carts around? Just how does all that work? Because we were struggling how to how to adapt our practices, um, <laughs> and something around standardisation of the patient review. So could we trial something like a checklist so that we made sure that we went through it <coughs> systematically for patients? So this seemed quite big. I was going. Uh, so what we realised was we had a massive system effect, so this is how it felt to me. So the, the, the registrars were between eight and half past, sometimes up to nine o'clock doing the ward round, and they were always thinking that they needed to rush off to go to theatre. And that's really hard from a human practice point of view for time to be able to do things. So, so the, trying to change something, even a little bit about antibiotic prescribing was really difficult because of the, the impact of what was going on for the rest of the team. So we needed to do something differently. So we, the team came up with this idea, so again I facilitated some team MDT working, and we came up with the idea of Registrar of the Week, this is a picture from this morning, um, and it's not quite worked because we've had some problems, so we've, we've fallen foul of one, one of our hurdles right at the beginning, but that's part of Improvement Week, isn't it? Um, so this week we've been doing Registrar of the Week, where we've been using the, the carts, this is the, doing things in action and making things happen at the time. I've been using the Leeds Improvement Method to record the observations and get the timings and, and actually weirdly, this is only one week and we haven't got that much data yet, but it's looking like it only takes one or two minutes more to actually carry out the, the tasks at the time rather than doing all the handover and all the interruptions. But don't hold me to that because I'm not sure quite where we're at with that. We managed to get one EDAN done, so an EDAN that was prepared already by an advanced nurse practitioner one afternoon then got finished on the ward round and we got it finished in 20 minutes and it was about 20 to 9 in the morning and that patient went home before lunchtime. So we've, we've got something going on there, we just need to develop it I think really. So I think this is the improvement work over the <coughs> weeks and months as to how we keep testing this and seeing what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to hand over to Betty who's going to give you some feel of the difference for the ward. Yeah, so yes, I'm here to speak to you just about the impact on the ward basically. Because uh, I worked Monday, Tuesday, which was the first two days that we had this registrar of the week. And it was so much more calm and controlled and, you know, just uh, everyone was taking the time a lot more. I've come on today, unfortunately, it's gone back to having our four ward rounds all at the same time and what a difference, like it's just manic. Um, so, yeah, so especially at the moment with staffing pressures and things, uh, we only really have three nurses on a shift now in the morning, whereas we used to have four, so we used to have a coordinator and then three nurses taking a team each, so... Especially now, it's a lot more difficult for us to sort of catch up on ward rounds. You know, we're looking through the notes, trying to catch up and see what's happened. Um, so with this sort of one registrar going around and seeing all the patients, you know, it's it's a lot better for us. Um, you know, because they're taking the time a lot more. FY ones aren't rushing out, and you know, to get notes and stuff coming back, and it's all a lot less stressful. Um, so yeah, so we've definitely found that more time has been spent, you know, with the patient as they go around and um, seeing them, uh, basically because they feel less rushed, so the patient feels that they can ask more questions and, um, you know, and it's just better for them really. And we're also finding that we're having a lot more sort of robust plans as well. Um, so things are actually, you know, they're looking through the notes and plans are actually happening because, you know, there's more people there to have the discussions and, and we're just finding that more things are sort of getting done. Um, so things yeah, like scans are being ordered you know, on the ward round, medicines are being changed at this time so the, the AMP or whatever isn't having to come back and check, uh, catch up on all these jobs, uh, so it's much better. Um, another thing that we found really beneficial is just having that one point of contact in the afternoon, uh, so just having that one registrar. For all them patients, so we just know that there's that one registrar that we go to, you know, if we have any problems or anything, so they're much easier to get, get in touch with. Um, and yeah, so we're also finding stuff like discharge planning as well, um, we feel that that has the potential to sort of speed these things up, just because plans are getting made a lot quicker um, and things are getting put into place a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, and another thing as well, uh, which I can't remember if I think it happened Monday or Tuesday. Um, we have a family at the moment and they're quite a big family um, so they're all coming and they're asking questions all individually so we're finding they're asking the same questions and then not feeling they were getting um, like a response back um, so one man they said to them you know the registrar's going to do the ward round after that you know he'll come and speak to you and um, so we had them in the relatives room and after we finished the ward round he went and spoke to the family and they were really happy with that so that also helped as well so, yeah. <laughs> 
I don't have a slide, so apologies. Um, <laughs> drafted in um, just to give the AMP perspective on this week. Um, we graduated the week from um, very experienced AMPs at the start of the week to our more junior staff towards the end of the week, which of course has backfired a little bit, bear in mind that, that the system's broken down the end of the week. Um, but our intention was to trial it with um, experienced practitioners who were prescribers who could request radiology, moving right through to um, on one of our most junior practitioners at the end of the week who actually couldn't request radiology and as a prescriber um, to see how that affected the ward round, how that impacted on um, the ward staff and how that impacted on the registrar. Um, obviously we haven't got that to feedback but we will have that to feedback by the end of next week. Um, it, it, urology from an advanced practitioner perspective has always felt quite chaotic as Catherine's always uh, already alluded to with one advanced practitioner for four elective teams trying to um, join every ward round and obviously you can't split yourself that many ways. That led to some inefficiencies because you didn't know what decisions had been made, what actions there were, what jobs were to follow up. You hadn't touched base with those patients so you actually didn't have a picture of who the patient was, what was going on. Um, so from Monday particularly and, and Tuesday from my perspective it was lovely and smooth and um, the registrar felt calm as well and I think from their perspective he's not here today but I think even he would acknowledge that actually he, he may not have been that keen on this um, way of working originally but he felt much less pressured by working in this manner than trying to be in, in a number of different places at one time his morning time was released for the ward round and that meant that he could take his time more discuss them get to know his team as well who were around him and what their capabilities were and that gave both the patients and the ward staff a, a lot better experience and from my perspective it made our day so much easier um, we were asked to keep a log of how many times we contacted the registrar in the afternoon and i can honestly say on monday it was zero and um, so um, tuesday I, I think it was close to zero so i think um, there's definitely it's definitely <coughs> worth trialing and pushing through further um, and I suppose it's a little bit disappointing that we haven't managed it all week, um, but there's definitely lots and lots of benefits in there for, for every staff group from, from what I can see. Hi, I'm Eileen, and I'm the process owner for the South PRW. Stopping the line was quite a difficult <coughs> um, thing to do, and it, part of it felt like a bit like a failure, but on reflection, it's really allowed us to focus and learn what we've learned over the last six months, continue even more improvement work. What we've learned in the last six months has really snowballed into a whole new journey, looking at the whole lead down process along with ward round decisions and our next steps in this process is we've identified hopefully next Monday we're going to identify a small cohort of short stay patients to have their lead down completed in the um, theatre which has been one of the consultants is going to do that for us. We've got early lead downs for long stay patients on the ward rounds now, further training and a session with the clinicians around lead down and meds are our next focus. We're also looking at the possible role in the register of the week, ward round from 42 straight round to J43, following on, or even before 42, as early discharges would be more beneficial to us. And this has allowed us to engage the whole team around what changes they want to make. That's it for our report out. I think um, I want to thank all the team for their hard work. I've been on uh, 42 this week and, it, and it's felt really different on there this week um, to what it can be like sometimes. Um, I think that um, we have seen a real sea change in neurology and a, a can-do attitude towards things. Um, I met with 42 this week about how do we use technology better from a nursing perspective. Um, iPads, we, we seem to have every single bit of device and kit plugged in everywhere around the ward. We are starting with nursing documentation, uh, scan for safety. We feel like we're doing everything on 42 and how do we do that um, in a sensible way? So I want to say thank you to the team this week because they've done some great work. Fantastic, thanks very much Penny. And really well done, that's terrific to see the progress that you made and also the way you described it in terms of how it felt in terms of being calmer and not as you know out of control and feeling you could get through things systematically is really, really good. And I think pays dividends the fact that you've, I think Eileen, what you said was a very, very crucial point about stopping the line is not a failure. In fact, I think it takes some courage to do that and it's the right thing to do because you regroup, work out what goes wrong. Because as we're doing this, this lead, all this leads improvement method work, we're coming up against hurdles, but that's 
that, that shows we're doing the hard stuff. That's, that's we expect to. The important thing is how we respond to it. And you've done that really positively. So I think that's terrific. I'm going to um, perhaps ask colleagues to save questions until we've heard from the next RPIW and then we can gather it all up uh, at the end. Is that okay? So well done and thank you. And if I can invite the, the next uh, RPIW group to come and, and take the stage, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, so this is, this is value stream four, uh, RPIW two, ophthalmology outpatients on patient check-in, and delighted to welcome the team, and <coughs> I'm sure you'll make your introduction, so over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, hello, my name is Helen Gilbert. I'm the Kaizen Promotion Office Lead for the Trust, um, and I've been the workshop lead for our second RPIW in the ophthalmology outpatients uh, value stream. This is our original uh, high-level value stream, and you can see here, in these triangles, it denotes how many patients wait at each stage of our journey from checking in to outpatient ophthalmology through to their outcome form being successfully captured in one of our systems so that we can safely support that patient beyond this stage of their journey. And what you can see here right at the start is 47 patients typically are waiting to, to, at some method of check-in to actually just let us know that they're here in time for their appointment and that's been the focus uh, of the team's work this week. I want to share with you uh, some patient quotes that Sophie captured in her observations uh, of this work before the week and the particular patient quote that's framed our overall work for the week is we have to queue before we can go in to sit and wait. <laughs> So that, was a, that really encapsulated a, a, the patient's experience of, of just getting in the department uh, to wait for their appointment. And you can see some of the other uh, quotes that we've got here from patients that we heard as we observed their journey. Um, we do have something called a project form. I'm really conscious that every time we put them up on slides, nobody can read them. <laughs> um, so essentially, the project form encapsulates uh, what do we know about this process and what do we want to do about it. And the theme of our work this week fell into four different areas. Um, we often see queues and refer to departments as being busy, but actually we challenged the team this week to think about how they can influence that process to see if we can get rid of uh, queuing for our patients by working differently. Um, is it right that we batch work into the type of work so that we as uh, employees in our organisation can just do the same task all the time? So that was another challenge the team had this week um, and actually just making our technology work for us better a theme that emerged in the report out that you've just heard particularly focusing on our self check-in kiosks and actually asking the team to navigate our hospital environment from the perspective of a patient and actually seeing how easy our, our organization is to navigate for our patients Hello, my name is Sophie, a KPO facilitator and team leader for this RPIW. This is our value stream map, um, and after gathering data, we came, we've got three separate check-in processes um, with three se separate lead times. So as Helen described, from when the patient arrives, this particular bit is from when the patient arrives to when they sit down in the waiting area. So for eye casualty, that took 4 minutes 13. Main clinic, we're calling it, was a little bit quicker. And self-checking was actually the longest process for our patient <coughs> due to the fact that they were rejoining a queue because they were unsuccessful at checking in. We have to measure our work, so we took to be able to see the improvements that we make. So our lead time baselines for self-checking were 380 seconds, eye casualty 253 seconds, and main clinic 136. There were a number of quality defects we wanted to measure. Uh, just wants us particularly interested in uh, patients that could not check in on the self-checking successfully. The way we wanted to work better as a team was to try and create one piece flow through our systems. So Sam's going to talk to you about patient flow. Oh, sorry, I actually have to talk about that time, which is our demand of work the pace at which we would like our work to happen. And every 166 seconds is the calculation there. 
we, we want a patient to come through our system to make sure we meet demand. Simon. Right, hello. So my name is Simon Dewsbury. I'm a consultant ophthalmologist and a team member for the RPIW. Um, the first part of my group's work was addressing some ideas which we formulated on um, addressing the fact that the waiting areas were not clearly labelled, um, also that the patients did not know their waiting times. So we thought this was impacting on the uh, front desk by patients having to interrupt staff um, with questions. So we developed a broad aim of de uh, defining the uh, waiting areas more clearly. Um, and as this went on, we learnt about what we call patient journey boards, which were used in other departments. Um, so right next to us in A&E, there was one on the right there. Um, there's one in the breast unit, which we particularly liked, and then on J24, I'm sure they're elsewhere. Um, and we wanted to use this as a template and adapt it for our journey through the eye clinic. We wanted to uh, modify this ourselves by adding a sort of you are here function to the boards. Um, one of the criticisms the patients had was that they didn't know their waiting times. It was very difficult in actual fact to update patients live with their waiting time. A compromise is to at least show them, depending on what waiting area they're in, that they're making progress through the system and we thought we could do this with the boards. Um, we also want to add information to the boards to try and answer some of the questions that the patients felt they needed to approach the desk for um, and the nursing staff in fact to, answer, to ask. So we trialled it with a board that you uh, sort of a very quickly knocked up board that you can see there. We did encounter some issues with uh, rearranging chairs to face the boards to gain the most impact on them. This, this caused issues within the department and gave us some sort of good learning points about briefing staff before changes. Um, we then did some brief feedback um, on what the patients thought of the boards. Um, most patients within the ophthalmology department spoke to on the feedback were frequent visitors and were well aware of the system in the department but did say that they would have appreciated this had they been a new patient particularly. We also looked at, looked at the Health Watch survey which was conducted last year um, and this looked at various uh, outpatient um, but including the eye clinic. Um, that did state that patients were seen fairly quickly by the nurses but had to wait to see the consultant um, and there was no explanation for this long delay. So we thought the boards could help with that. And it also suggested that 33% of patients did not know who to approach with concerns in clinic and again we felt the boards could help with that. So our actions are to further develop the boards from the templates we're in the process of getting back from medical illustration and, um, and implement a, a, a practice board before the next 30 day report out. Hello, my name is Kirsty Heslock. I'm the outpatient site manager at St James's and also the process owner and team member for this week. So at the start of our IPIW week this week, we've gathered lots of data about our self-checking kiosks. And that showed us that in the month of July, 40% of self-checking attempts were actually unsuccessful. And this had increased to 43% in the month of August. So this week we knew that we had to really focus on the reasons why those self-checking attempts were actually failing and, and being unsuccessful. So we gathered some more data, uh, which shows that between June, July and August of this year, over 3,000 patients were choosing to check in at least 45 minutes before their appointment time. We quickly discovered that actually the self-checking kiosk only allows you to check in up to 45 minutes before your appointment time. So the data is showing that patients are choosing to arrive early, but the self-checking kiosk weren't actually allowing the patients to check in when they arrived. So we've made some very simple change this week, which now means that when you actually arrive for your appointment, you can successfully self-check in at your first attempt. Um, we also realised quite quickly that we need to reassure our patients in using the self-checking kiosks. And um, We actually witnessed one patient successfully self-check in, then join the queue with reception to check with the receptionist that they knew that he'd actually arrived successfully. Um, so we've overcome this by adding a very, very simple message onto the self-checking kiosk, which now says, you have successfully checked in, the reception team know that you are here, you do not need to report to the reception desk. So we've made some very simple changes this week, um, which we're sure will increase our success rate on the self-checking kiosk, save valuable reception time and improve the patient experience. Hi, my name's Chris, I'm ophthalmology supervisor and a member of the team for this week. Um, we were given a sponsor challenge at the start of the week which asked us to consider how we speed up the checking process for follow-up patients who visit the clinic frequently. We agreed that we need to influence patients' behaviour and support them in using the self-checking. 
We recognised that we could only increase the success rates by using the self-checking by showing patients and staff that the overall success rates can be improved by making small changes, which we have done this week. We believe once a patient experiences a successful self-checking, they will return to the kiosk for follow-up visits, quickly realising it's the most efficient way to check in. To help us to do this, we've amended our reception script, which the receptionists follow. At the start of the week, there was nothing in the script to encourage our receptionists to support patients in using the kiosk. We have therefore added an extra paragraph onto the script to encourage patients to use self-checking. Inform them that we've made several improvements to increase the overall success rate and promote that it's the fastest method to check in and it will help us reduce the queues in the future. We're also really pleased to report that an advertisement for volunteers in ophthalmology will be published next week. Volunteer support in ophthalmology will encourage and support patients in using the self-checking kiosk and increase our overall success rate, reduce our queues and the amount of time it takes for a patient to check in. We have amended the reception script to include the additions to prompt patients to self-check in. Okay. Hello, my name is Trudy Ellison. I'm Assistant Patient Services Coordinator at St James's and I'm a process owner for this team this week who are all trying different processes in ophthalmology to help the team to help our patients. After reviewing evidence that showed eye casualty check-in, we found that this process took three times longer to check in a patient than main reception. Because of this, we all decided we needed to try out a new idea. And what we did, we basically shared the workload out equally at the desk. We trialled out this in reception and timed the difference while it was happening. Although we could see an improvement on the data we recorded, we found this created much more pressure and surfaced new challenges for the team at the desk. We do realise that going forward, there is still lots of work to be done around how to make this easier for everybody involved in that, but we are planning to work with the team so we can provide a quicker and more efficient check-in for our patients. Hello, my name is Kate and I'm a clerical officer in ophthalmology outpatients and a member of the team this week. As a team, we decided to try and make the patient journey into our hospital a little smoother and make sure clear signage assisted the patients getting to the right place for their appointment. We walked the patient journey and they gave us a better idea of where signage was unclear and where signage was needed. We decided jello was the best colour scheme with a big black bold writing and a symbol of the eye. This was to aid patients with eyesight problems. We placed these up and above spaces of walls, around clinic, corridors and outside the lifts. We then went back to clinic to ask the patients their opinions and it was great that some of the patients noticed it and made it easier for them to find the clinic. Hello, my name's Tim Hunter. I'm the Head of Optometry Services based mainly in Chancellor Wings at St James's. I'm a team member of the RPIW that is trying to improve the check-in experience for patients at the eye department. Um, our 5S process focused on the reception area in the eye clinic and we identified that there was clutter from equipment, leaflets and other unnecessary items. We could see how this could look disorganised from a patient perspective and that it would be difficult for the reception team to work efficiently as they did not have much space to work around them. We tried a variety of changes in layout. Some things worked, some did not. We found the 5 s to be challenging as working in a busy reception area proved distracting to the reception staff as we tried to make changes. Uh, we also did not have time to inform all our staff of the new changes before they were happening. However, we still managed to make uh, changes to improve the work area and help the team behind the desk. Uh, there are still more improvements to be made. We now want to develop an agreement on a shared vision of how we want reception to look for our patients and provide an ex improved experience for our patients and staff. As the team have uh, really well articulated, we tested our ideas this week and in the short time that we did have to test these ideas, there was a significant improvement in the lead time for eye casualty patients, uh, 27%, and the main clinic, a huge uh, change there for 81%. So it, it, the, we, we know there's a lot more work to be done. But as the team have said, there is a, a plan in place for a newspaper, which Kirsty will tell you about, to try and get to the next stage for 30 days. So the newspaper is essentially our action tracker. So it's all the things that we want to do from today, documented on an action tracker, which we will feed back at the 30-day report out and hopefully give some good progress on that. So in terms of what have the team learned this week, um, when you create one improvement, you can often create a different problem further downstream. Um, you can never do enough Nemo Washi. I've put that up intentionally to check whether anyone in the audience can tell me what Nemo Washi means. 
Technically, it's Technically, it's gardening. Preparing the, ground for it. Preparing the people. So you heard a really strong theme <laughs> emerging about, you know, we, we learned a lot this week. We've upset some staff this week, and we did not. We, we absolutely did not intend to, because asking people to do something differently in the flow of their normal day-to-day -day work is a real challenge, and we really appreciate those staff engaging in that activity for us. And um, actually. The big thing that emerges from all of this work, when we have time to reorganise our work, we can reduce the amount of time it takes and improve quality and safety where appropriate. It's really important to focus on patients' experience of our services because by doing that, that's the best way we can learn to improve them. And still from a Kaizen Promotion Office perspective, we're still not quite getting to the inch wide mile deep. There's an awful lot of work goes on just in the patient check-in process. Three different ways a patient can check in. So still in terms of the volume of work this week, this team have set their standards very high in terms of what they want to get through uh, over the course of the 30, 60 and 90 days. It's really important that we also recognise uh, people who've supported us this week uh, who, who've not reported out. We did actually have a patient here this week, Philip Elphick, who is an ophthalmology patient. He joined the team on Monday and really focused their attention on the, the patient experience through this journey. Uh, the next there is, is a big long list of all the great administrative staff that Kate and Trudy and Chris and Kirsty were representing in the week who took on the tough challenge of trying out new ideas for us and demonstrating the benefits that we can get when we think differently about our work. Some of them are here, thank you. Um, Kath Walters and her nursing team, we didn't think we were going to impact nursing this week, we did. We upset them, we recovered the position, but you know, they, they understand the nature of this work and they, they had a great team spirit around this. The optometry team and Mr McKetty <coughs> for releasing our clinical workforce this week. Our RPIW sponsors, Alexandra and Helen, come, two, S, two CSUs coming together to support this work. And yet again, Stuart Haynes and the post-grad education team, we still struggle to get a room for one entire week so that we do not disrupt these people in their thinking and testing processes. And yet again, Stuart Haynes and the post-grad team have provided us with a room for this week. Uh, so a really big thank you to them. Um, it goes without saying, this is always the bit I find really tough. It's such a privilege working with people who deliver our services for an entire week, getting to know them and seeing them really influence things that make a difference to our patients. So thank you to our RPIW team. Well done, well done, that's terrific. I was actually, um, I think, going to say that um, Perhaps if, if you can, you sat down a bit quick, if you can, if you can, if you can come back, I, I did want to recognise your participation in the RPIW, so if you, if you come back on stage, we've got, um, we've got some certificates to hand out. Um, so first of all, Tim, congratulations, thank, thank you very much. much. Kirsty, Hi, thank you. Well done, congratulations. Trudy? Yeah. There you go. You. Congratulations, Kate. Hello. There you are. You well done. Simon. Thank you. And Christine. You. So, we are really good. <laughs> well done. And while you stood up, if I could ask the TURP EDAN team just to join you, because I'm hoping that we'll be able to just have a few questions from colleagues that have come along to be at Report Out in terms of your experience. And I think it's really nice to have, you guys have done your first RPIW, and we've got colleagues who've been at this for some time, and, and I guess the experience of um, a lot of work on this. So maybe some useful reflections between you. So open it up, questions, comments, views. Joe, I can always rely on you to get us started. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, marvellous. <laughs> it's reminiscent of a previous one at a previous report out, and it's about the, the, the check in for us, self check in. Having supported a patient at the Leeds Dental School just a few months ago, where you walk into the main area and there's a, there's a self check in, then you head off down to the clinic down a corridor and there's another self check in. And a lot 
lost the confused on people trying to do it twice and then still go for a third event at the desk as everyone checked in twice now. So the question is, and I don't really know whether it's a central question or a team question, do, do we have a repository of these really quick, great ideas that you've picked up on that you've thought, just by putting better scripts on the screen, you're saving all this thing. Now, there's a lot of self-checking all around this hospital. Mm. Uh, please say we're not going to wait until they get a, a value stream <laughs> in their area to fix their checking. It's like you want to get on with put some kind of megaphone and say, mm. we've got a thing about mm. checking scanners mm. that could mm. just solve everyone's mm. problems. So it's that idea, a great idea, how mm. fast does it get out into the system if it's common across the trust? Mm. Great. Thank you, Joe. You had your hand up there, Helen. Yes, yeah, so um, what we've learned throughout the course this week, particularly with self-checking, is the very nature of setting up individual clinics on there requires you to think about some of these things. So actually, all of those great improvements will feed back into what we call a value stream sponsor team, which is headed up for that value stream by Suzanne. And actually, we make a judgment call about what, what which of these elements are just very focused on this work or could be spread around the trust. And there's so much we've learned about self-checking this week that could just be replicated right across the organisation. But it's going to require some resource to take responsibility for doing it. But the other wonderful thing is the super users in each area who manage this work have absolutely got direct access to be able to influence this. So that was another really positive learning this week about actually learning what you can and can't impact. So you're absolutely right, Joe, and it will be going through the value stream sponsor team and those are massive quick wins, wins that we should just sp communicate and spread right across the organisation. Thanks very much, Helen. Anyone else want to comment on that? No? Well, well I, and I spoke to the InTouch company, which do most of the, uh, the self-check-ins, and uh, there is a process by which you can reprogram things quite dramatically, which you have to s yeah. submit for, and it costs, costs, costs money. But actually, we, we found that there are um, modifications you can make just by being a super user, which can which can largely solve a lot of the problems that yeah. you might have, which you yeah. don't actually have to go through this process yeah. about. So yeah, um, yeah, it's about spreading that word, I think. Yeah, um, that's that's really helpful. I think there'll be there'll be a number of areas where we see the benefits that actually will save us money if we do this right. That we if we invest up front, we can and that and we should be looking at, at, at those. I mean, just to say, actually, it's, it's really good to have this RPIW this week because it was the Trust's AGM uh, on Wednesday and there, there was a question from the public about uh, iClinic and what were we doing about it and it's very crowded and so Suzanne was able to talk about this work uh, and our plans and so on. So it's really helpful to know to, to know that we're working on the stuff that matters to our patients. And the comments you put up, Helen, for, at the start from the kind of experience of patients resonated. The other thing I should say is that these guys have just hosted the chief executive of the CQC. So, you know, grateful to you for that. He, he was very impressed, so that's good news. Um, other questions, other things anyone wants to, to ask or, yeah. Yeah, just if you wanted you guys in the points on this here. Prior to going to your where to start of the week, how many individuals were you trying to deal with it before that? I think it, I mean, I, I've, I've done a, a morning shift on 42 before, and um, there was absolutely four ward rounds trying to go on at the same time uh, in that area. I think if you add in other teams as well, um, such as the colorectal team or the acute team, I would say you could probably get six or seven teams. Eileen would probably back me up. I mean, Eileen's is a short stay war, so it's probably even more. Um, and, and that, trying to, the, the want to put a nurse on every one of those ward rounds is just not possible. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I found myself peeling off of one particular ward round, but I was thinking, well, how does, how does the communication get back to the nurse in charge from everything else that was going on? And, and I, if anybody's been on a surgical ward round, it happens at lightning speed because they have to be somewhere else. They have to be in clinic, they have to be in theatre. Um, and so that time to make decisions, talk to the patient, um, <coughs> look at prescription charts and all of that, it's, it's different on medical ward rounds. We know that we've got med medical boards in AMS, but it's that real challenge of how do we stop and think what is a, what is a good and productive ward round in neurology. So I, I would say seven or eight ward rounds can be going on at the same time. <coughs> And this is not unusual to urology, I've worked in orthopedics and plastics and it's the same. Um, 
I don't know if you want to say anything about it, Eileen. Yeah. Or <coughs> from the elective point of view, it's there are more than six and seven going on at some time. We're saying this morning, I have to stand in the middle of the bay and just listen to, try and listen to everybody because I just can't be on every ward. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Helen Morrison. I'm a clerical officer down in ophthalmology. Can I just ask if the CT, we have patients that attend them a couple of times this week, and, and I've seen it before, that we don't have enough available seating. Um, extremely busy clinics some mornings. I was just wondering if um, that was an area that would be looked into. We have um, quite a lot of elderly patients, tenders and uh, seating being quite a problem. Okay. Question? Uh, Karen's got an idea of doing that. I, I absolutely agree. And over the last six months, we've actually put another 40 chairs already into that department. I think our challenge now is just putting more and more seats in is now causing other safety problems. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to look at how many patients and also because we know that the group of patients that come quite often come with more than one visitor and whether there's a different way of us managing that number of people and if we're saying that patients are arriving a good hour before their appointment do we need to have some thought about a pre-weight area mm -hmm. where we can access the coffee area outside and then actually have patients who are in that half an hour before their appointment that move into. So absolutely open to looking at all sorts of suggestions. I think we just need to bear in mind the physical environment of putting more and more chairs in just gives different problems. We have patients with wheelchairs, we have patients with um, jobs, we have staff trip over both. Mm. We just need to bear in mind um, all of that, but more than happy for the group that's looking at it to come up with yeah. with suggestions and we will support whatever we can do because we all want patients to be having a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think um, one of the other things that we noticed quite early on in the week was around the number of attendances at different times of the week. So I think one of the challenges for us um, providing those services is about how we spread that out across the week. So we don't have 200 patients on Tuesday and 50 on Friday. So we will be looking at that as well going forward. I think it's a really good question because it's one I've seen myself in terms of people standing up and the challenges that that gives us in that area. So I'm sure as part of this whole process, uh, looking at that through the Leeds Improvement Method gives us the best chance of finding a solution that is sustainable while we address some of the bigger environmental um, and estate challenges that we plan to do, but that'll take us some years to, to get to resolve yes just finally that's like, uh, we obviously can't share everything just because we simply don't have time but uh, there was some work done during the week in terms of because we can see that our patient behavior in that area is that our, a lot of our patients arrive well ahead of their appointment times i just want kirsty to share with you what they've changed on the message on self-checking that might assist with that so rather than putting more seating in, they're trialling a different solution in terms of the text. Yeah, so it's, it's very new. We've only done this on Thursday afternoon, I think. Yes. It probably only went live on Friday today. <laughs> today. today. Um, yeah, so, today. so we can't speak back and probably until we get to third today report out. We hope we have a bit more information about that. But, but essentially what we're saying on the self-checking is please don't arrive in the department until 30 minutes before your appointment time. So yes, you can self-check in, but go get yourself a coffee, go to another waiting area. Don't physically go into the department until 30 minutes before your appointment time. And we've linked that in with Kate as a receptionist. Yeah. So she knows that we can physically do that from a receptionist perspective to only pull the patient's notes out 30 minutes before the appointment. Yeah. Have a time so scale window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So right. hopefully at the third today every part out we can that's, figure out a bit more about that. That's good. That's really good. That shows the value of this approach in terms of addressing some of these really practical problems that matter to our patients. I'm going to finish there. Um, we have gone over time, but it was worth it in terms of the... Um, the feedback and the questions and just the sense of real progress and momentum we've got so well done to both teams uh, really good to see this uh, happening and thank you colleagues for coming please spread the word about report out because this is this is the Leeds improvement method this is what we're, we're trying to achieve across the trust so we need everyone who can come to come and there's a great learning here for all of us and indeed spreading the word about how we're trying to 
improve our services for patients is, you know, is hugely important for all of us. So thanks very much and see you next time. Cheers. Thank you. Well done.